Welcome to the Deep Dive. Today, we're uh, opening up a stack of research and reports, really looking at the future of human AI collaboration and augmented humanity. Now, you've probably heard all the noise, right? The doom and gloom stuff. AI is coming for jobs, replacing skills, making us obsolete. We're going to set that aside today. Not because there aren't valid concerns, there are, but because the sources we're looking at tell a, well, a much more interesting story. Our mission here is to really unpack how the future might not be about AI conquest, but about a pretty profound partnership, a co-creation model. And this is already unlocking human potential right now and reshaping creativity and work in fundamental ways. Yeah, it's completely natural to feel that anxiety. But the sources we've reviewed, the area that fear is maybe a bit misplaced. It's less about displacement from work itself, you know, yeah. and more about displacement from the low value repetitive stuff. What's really fascinating, I think, is the shift in perspective the sources highlight. AI moving from just automation to being a kind of cognitive co-pilot. So we really need to focus on what skills become critical now and what this augmented human idea actually looks like on the ground today. Okay, so less of a threat, more like hitting a massive upgrade button for humanity. Let's dive into that core idea that what if your next big breakthrough, your next brilliant idea wasn't just yours? What if it was co-created you know, seamlessly with an AI partner? So let's start at the beginning. The dawn of the augmented human. When, when these sources talk about augmented humanity, what exactly are they getting at? It's not cyborgs, right? No, not really. Not in the sci-fi sense anyway. They mean AI actively extending our own cognitive capabilities, our thinking, mm -hmm. our memory, our analysis. And this integration, it's already happening, often very smoothly, sometimes so much so we don't even notice it. Right. If you look at the sources, they emphasize AI's initial role is often about reducing cognitive load, taking stuff off our mental plate. Think about um, a complex legal case review. An AI can sift through millions of documents, flag relevant stuff, quantify risks in minutes. Okay, something a human team would take weeks to do. Exactly. And that doesn't replace the lawyer. It actually frees them up. Frees them from the grunt work of recall and searching, letting them focus entirely on strategy, ethical angles, client interaction, the higher value human skills. Ah, I see. So the AI handles the what and the human focuses on the so what and the what next. It pushes our brains towards strategy. And we see this in specialized areas too, like you mentioned, personalized health analytics. Absolutely. AI models tracking biomarkers, sleep, genetics, integrating info that would take a human specialist ages to synthesize. They give proactive health insights. That fundamentally augments the ability of both the patient and the doctor to predict and prevent problems. Right. Another example of this sort of invisible partner doing the heavy lifting behind the scenes. And that functional distinction is key. Co-pilot for strategy versus automation for rote tasks. The sources consistently position AI as a force multiplier for creativity, for complex problem solving, not just a replacement tool. Okay, that partnership idea leads us straight into this concept that's getting a lot of buzz in the sources. Redefining work and creativity with the centaur approach. I love the image, the human-horse hybrid, but what does it actually mean, like in practical terms? Well, connecting it to performance, the centaur approach is pretty undeniable. The term comes from chess, actually. Human players using AI tools, the centaurs, consistently started beating both the best human grandmasters and the most powerful chess AIs working alone. Ah, okay, so the combination is stronger than either part separately. Exactly. And the sources show this over and over in complex novel tasks, tasks that need both massive data crunching and human intuition, judgment, creativity. The human AI team wins. There was one study mentioned looking at urban planning teams trying to fix chronic traffic problems. The human only team took like eight weeks to model solutions. The Centaur team, they had an AI process, decades of traffic data, weather patterns, transit use, all that stuff. They cut the modeling time by 60%. 60 percent that's huge and crucially it freed up the human planners to focus entirely on the stuff ai can't do well community feedback public sentiment political feasibility the human stuff okay so that implies the human's value changes dramatically it's less about doing the task and more about directing the ai understanding the output that's exactly it the real value is in asking the right questions framing the problem correctly and critically interpreting what the ai gives back knowing its limits and this is why the sources predict this boom in new hybrid roles. Things like prompt engineers, AI-assisted designers, uh, synthetic media creators. Leveraging AI isn't just a nice-to-have skill anymore. It's becoming a core competency. But wait a second. If the Centaur team is so much better, do the sources talk about pitfalls? Like, what happens if the human partner isn't skilled enough? 
or maybe too trusting of the AI. That's a really critical point. The sources definitely stress that. An ill-informed human operator can actually become a bottleneck, or worse, amplify errors. If you don't understand the AI's potential biases or its limitations, you might just accept flawed output. The model really requires, well, mutual respect for what each partner brings to the table. Got it. So it's a partnership that requires skill on the human side, too. And it's not just about efficiency, is it? The sources also talk about AI as a creative muse. Yes, absolutely. We're moving beyond just you know, generating text. AI tools are now helping artists, musicians, writers. They can generate novel variations, complex harmonies, visual styles, things a human might not even conceive of, but that are aesthetically interesting. The human still provides the intent, the emotion, the final curatorial judgment, but the AI helps explore creative boundaries you might not reach alone. So for you listening, the message seems to be embrace this collaboration. Leaning into a centaur approach could be key to thriving, not just surviving. Right. If you can make your work, whatever it is, a centaur effort, you're likely operating at a higher level of creativity and impact. But this high performance, this deep collaboration, it relies heavily on data, massive amounts of data. Yeah. Which brings us right into the next big theme, the personalization revolution. And the power of personalization enabled by AI is, well, pretty astonishing. We're talking hyper-personalized experiences. It goes way beyond just recommending a product you might like. It's about tailoring the actual experience in real time. The sources point to things like adaptive education learning paths changing instantly based on how a student is doing. Confused. It adapts. Mastering it quickly. It accelerates. Or adaptive entertainment. I read something about storylines subtly shifting based on viewer mood data from, like, biometrics. Exactly that kind of thing. And this convenience, this tailoring, extends right into our private lives, too. Yeah, the sources mention AI being used as a guide for wellness, for mental health, offering proactive support. That shift from just reacting to problems to actively preventing them, that seems huge. A preventative partnership. It is potentially transformative, but, and this is big but, this is where the sources really emphasize the double-edged sword. Because depersonalization requires deep, continuous data gathering. You get amazing convenience, tailored experiences. But the trade-off is significant, right? Data privacy, autonomy. But huge trade-offs. You're inherently giving up a lot of control over your personal information. And the filter bubble risk, too. If the AI is constantly trying to please you and personalize everything, it could wall you off from different perspectives, challenging information. Precisely. Remember the Centaur model. The human partner is supposed to bring context, ethics, critical thinking. But if that human is living inside an echo chamber built by their personalization AI, how effective can they be? They might lose the ability to offer that diverse perspective, that truly strategic oversight. They become predictable. Hmm. So the risk is the co-pilot, trying to be helpful, actually makes the human driver less aware, less capable of critical thought. That's the danger. The AI's efficiency could inadvertently limit the human's worldview and critical capacity. That's a really important warning. If the machine is your partner, you need to actively ensure it's expanding your view, not shrinking it. Which means we need to address the complexities, the ethical side of this partnership. Okay, so if we're essentially outsourcing chunks of our thinking and doing to these AI partners, we have to look at the challenges. The sources flag three big ones. Bias, accountability, and the future of human agency. Yeah, and these aren't just abstract philosophical points. They're practical, structural problems we need to engineer solutions for. Take accountability. If a human AI medical team misdiagnoses someone or an AI-assisted design leads to a failure, who's responsible? Right. Is it the human who maybe ignored an AI warning or maybe trusted it too much? Or is it the AI itself? Yeah. Or the developers? If it presented flawed data because its training set was biased, our current legal and insurance systems just aren't built for that kind of ambiguity yet. And the bias issue feeds right into that, doesn't it? AI learns from historical data. Human history is full of biases, yeah. Exactly. So the risk is that these Centaur systems don't just replicate past biases, they automate them, they scale them up at incredible speed. We could accidentally hard code inequality into our future systems. So the goal isn't just finding bias, but building systems where you can actually track and audit how decisions are made within that human AI team. Precisely. Auditability becomes crucial. And uh, we also need to talk directly about the job anxiety piece. The sources are quite clear. Yes, specific tasks might be displaced. Think manual loan application processing, maybe. But new roles emerge. Managing the AI systems, auditing the data, designing the interactions, the prompt structures. It's a massive economic shift. So less about job elimination, more about job transformation, requiring significant reskilling. Yes, rapid reskilling is key. 
But the sources generally suggest a shift, not an endpoint for human work. And if we zoom out, this collaboration model is likely to reshape big social structures too. We're already seeing it impact discussions around education, moving focus from memorization to critical thinking, creativity, AI literacy, and even potentially governance. Using AI for better policy modeling, forecasting the potential consequences of decisions, that could be powerful. Okay, so looking ahead then, let's go beyond 2025. If the seamless integration is the direction, what might true human AI symbiosis look like in, say, the next decade? Well, one of the most uh, intriguing ideas popping up in the sources is this concept of augmented empathy. Augmented empathy. That sounds counterintuitive. Technology helping us be more empathetic. Usually we hear the opposite. I know. It sounds a bit like science fiction. Book, eh? But the idea is quite powerful. Imagine AI processing subtle social and emotional cues, vocal tone, micro expressions, word choice things humans often miss, especially under stress. Okay. How would that work practically? Imagine an AI co-pilot. Maybe listening in on a difficult team negotiation via someone's earpiece. It analyzes subtle cues indicating rising frustration or perhaps unspoken agreement that the human manager isn't picking up on. And it could quietly suggest, rephrase that, maybe ask about their concerns first, not just the desired outcome. It uses data analysis to potentially improve human connection and understanding. Wow. Using tech insight to enhance a fundamentally human skill like empathy. That's, yeah. that's fascinating. So ultimately, where do the sources land? What's the big question this all leads to? They really converge on this fundamental question for the next you know, 50 years or more. Will this deep human AI collaboration lead to something totally new? A higher form of collective intelligence where our combined abilities just transcend what humans can do alone? Or the other side of that coin, does this partnership fundamentally change what it means to be human? Are we actually evolving into a new kind of entity, a collaborating species? It's a profound question. But overall, the picture the sources paint is definitely one of collaboration, not conquest. And our analysis today, I think, underscores that the focus needs to be practical. It's about engineering these collaboration structures effectively, managing the bias, ensuring accountability, and really figuring out how to turn these massive technological shifts into genuine opportunities. Right. So for you listening, what does this all mean? We've unpacked a lot today, the Centaur teams, the potential even for augmented empathy. Think about your own skills, your intuition, your strategic thinking. Where could you best augment your abilities within AI Copilot? What's that one complex problem, maybe that project you dread starting because it feels overwhelming? Imagine tackling it with an AI partner handling the heavy cognitive load. Could that become your next breakthrough? Something to think about. Thank you for sharing your sources with us for this deep dive. We're really excited to see what you create next.